Welcome to the Future of Work Live. Hosted by Mark Salisbury, author of the new book, Socrates Digital for Learning and Problem Solving. Each 25-minute episode with Mark and his guests prepares you for the upcoming new world of work. Welcome to the Future Work Live. I'm Mark Salisbury, your host. Today, Dr. Lani Gudawardia will be my guest, and she'll discuss social presence and how it affects you. And so, uh, Charlotte, and that's Lani Gudawardia, is a distinguished professor of online education and instructional technology in the Organization Information and Learning Sciences program at the University of New Mexico. She founded the Graduate Emphasis in Distance Education and for the past 30 years has taught courses in online learning, culture, research, and evaluation. She's passionate about researching the social cultural context of on-learning communities and social construction of knowledge. She's consulted for the World Bank and Asian Development Bank and was a Fulbright regional researcher in Morocco and Sri Lanka. So join me in welcoming Lonnie to the show. Hi, Lonnie. I'm glad this, glad you could make it. Thank you, Mark. Thank you for inviting me to talk about social <laughs> presence. <laughs> well, let's get right to it, Lonnie, and let's talk about, you know, what is social presence? Okay, so social presence is the degree to which a person is perceived as a real person in mediated communication. So it is this sense of connection that you feel with each other. And it incorporates two concepts. One is the concept of intimacy and the other one is the concept of immediacy. Now in intimacy, it is the ability of the medium to convey your sense of presence. So when we are in a situation like this, you can see me, you can hear me, you can see my nonverbal cues, the way I look at the camera, et cetera. So, this medium can convey a greater sense of social presence than the telephone because you connect with only the voice. Mm -hmm. So it differs in different media. The presence that is generated differs in different media. Immediacy is the psychological distance of the communicators. So mm -hmm. it differs in the same medium. So I can be a person who really wants to connect with you, show a feeling of caring, or I can be aloof and di uh, distanced. So uh, we have different ways of communicating our presence, either through the medium or through the way we communicate as people. And one good thing is social, social presence can be cultures, cultured. So that means that immediacy can be increased. And researchers have shown that social presence is key to the social environment of online learning and virtual teaming in the future of work. Okay. Well, that takes us to, you know, the obvious question is, is, you know, why is this important? You know, why can't we just do our work, send a report and be done with it? All right. In order to do your work, you need connection. Oh. So... It provides that sense of connection with team members, which can lead to trust building. So let's say you're working in a group and you are, you're working in a team and you need to be able to trust the other person at the end of the communication line mm -hmm. who you may never know personally, right? So it can generate a feeling of belongingness. And when participants feel that they belong, it also increases inclusivity and a sense of community. Also, social presence is the foundation for ethics of care. When people feel cared for, they are more likely to contribute their ideas because they know that they will, their ideas will be acknowledged. So this is essential for developing a virtual team or an online learning community. Hmm. Well, you know, it, it reminds me of this thing that people will say around interviewing for jobs and things like that is they try to reserve their opinion until they meet the person, right, in a social setting or, or in person. And those are all those little, those intangibles, isn't it, that add up to our impression of what a human, you know, and what another human being is and what they contribute? Yes, it is. Because 
unless we really get a feeling for the other person and a sense of connection with the other person, maybe it's through experiences that we can relate to. Uh, and unless we, unless we have that sense of trust, it's very difficult to feel connected, right? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So this is important. Okay. So that brings us to, you know, um, how uh, does social presence affect communication then? I mean, it seems to me, you know, that you could just send them an email and be good with it, right? But uh, it seems to be that you're telling us it's a little bit more than that. It is. So now if you really look at the two concepts, social presence and communication, they are, they are two different concepts. Social presence is the connection. Communication is actually a realization of the interaction sequence, right? So social presence can be thought of as the subjective measure of the presence of others, how I feel connected to you, Mark. And the communication is the quality of the interaction sequence and context, right? So when there is a heightened sense of social presence, there is also a chance for communication to take place as people feel connected to each other. So in virtual teaming, for example, initially people may be quite reluctant to talk uh, and express their ideas. Mm -hmm. But the moment you feel that sense of connection to each other, then you're more likely to uh, say something and express your ideas. So if you really want to utilize the diversity of a team and create that sense of community in virtual teaming, social presence is a factor you have to really consider. Okay. So I think I hear you saying that you can teach this. Is that right? I mean, you've got the quiet people who have the great ideas, but they won't connect. Can they be taught to have more social presence? Yes. And so the quiet people or perhaps the introverts can develop their social presence because social presence really can be cultured. So for us at universities, when we teach online, we train faculty to generate this sense of presence. And it can there can be many ways in which you can generate this. Uh, Actually, online, I have found that introverts are more likely to express themselves when they feel that connection. So mm -hmm. therefore, generating this sense of connection is important. So how do you do it? Be yourself and let your personality come through. Uh, because, you know, in mediated communication, you don't want to be somebody else. I know people use avatars. <laughs> people use mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. anonymous characters. But... People connect when they see you as your real self. So I, I would be very interested to know what others think of me now that I'm trying to talk about this topic. Uh, and let your personality come through. So one thing is, especially when you're teaching through Zoom, for example, or communicating through Zoom, uh, we say, look at the camera and connect with your audience as a real person. So for example, one of the first things we ask people to do is to introduce themselves to each other, right? So introductions are important because they build that sense of connection. So pay attention to self-disclosure and the authenticity of your identity. So the more you self-disclose, the more you tell about yourself, the more likely that people are going to connect with you. Hmm. Also, you can connect through storytelling. You know, storytelling is a format that's great to increase your social presence. Uh, for example, I have my students do a little activity, like an icebreaker activity, where they, uh, I have this phrase which says, the riskiest thing I did in my life was, and then they have to fill it out. And so it tells you uh, about the person, uh, what risks would they take, and then you connect with each other. So in the text-based online medium, you can use emoticons, like when you send your emails, people usually use these expressions of feelings through icons that express emotion. Mm -hmm. uh, so you overcome the absence of uh, social context cues by creating these icons yourself. Uh, in online environments, we also create social spaces, such as a virtual pub 
or a cyber cafe for participants to connect and get to know each other outside their task setting. And this is a nice way to also connect and get to know each other, feel that sense of community. So, and I want to take the word presence, the concept of presence. And actually I have to thank a wonderful student of mine who came up with this idea of looking at the letters that make up presence and determining mm. what would really uh, help us communicate presence. So P in presence st stands for praise, praise others and acknowledge them. R, reinforce and provide feedback. E, make eye contact. Eye contact is essential for communication through a system like Zoom or you know what we're using right mm. now. S, smile, and E, encourage, and get them to communicate, make it comfortable for them. Hmm. Names stands for names. You use names to address people. And when you're called by name, you know that the other person has actually figured out you're in this space, right? C for comfort, create a comforting environment. And E, experience, share your experience uh, because it makes you real. Well, you know what? I realized as you were talking that we really had moved on to the next question, which is how can an individual increase their social presence? And you're on such a roll, I didn't want to interrupt. So I just put the, put the question up. <laughs> okay, wonderful. So these are some ways in which you can actually increase social presence. And, uh, you know, there may be others that uh, the audience can connect with, but this is something that we actually pay a lot of focus on at the beginning of any virtual environment. Was, is it whether it's building a virtual team or whether it's an online class? And another thing that we do, especially in online classes, you know, after students introduce themselves, they talk about themselves as professionals. They also talk about their hobbies. We do a real um, a collage of people's experiences and their hobbies. Uh, you can do this in a table format. You can do this in a PowerPoint for format. And then after the introductions are over, you post this so that people know, you know, what the strengths are and, mm -hmm. you know, what hobbies they like, who they are as people. And that sense of connection really helps uh, generate uh, a lot of engagement in online classes, in virtual teams. Uh, I sp spend a lot of time actually building the presence and connection of the team, the sense of community, even before uh, we go to task related activities. And then when I put uh, my students in groups uh, for collaboration on projects, mm -hmm. they are more likely to feel connected to each other. So fewer group issues or team issues as we uh, work with them. You know, that's, that's interesting because you're trying to accelerate what happens naturally out there. And sometimes, it does even naturally, it doesn't go as fast as you think, because I remember I have a, a friend um, that uh, we knew from church and it was years before I knew where he worked and he knew where I worked. <laughs> we were one day I went and made a presentation at a national laboratory. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's called Sandia, the national yeah. laboratories. Right. And. He's in the audience. And I go, I didn't know you worked at Sandia. And he goes, I didn't know you worked at the University of New Mexico. And so, and then I go, wow, how did we miss that? Because we went to like ball games together and stuff, you know? And so um, that is interesting. And, and it sounds to me like what you're saying is let's be purposeful about this. And even if we're online, we can know a lot about people that's important and can help us work together if we focus on it. Is that, am I putting words in your mouth? Yeah, you are putting words in my mouth. And I, I have to say this in virtual environments. And I think the future of work is going to be predominantly virtual in many instances. Yeah. Uh, 
we have to put a put, put a lot of effort to create this uh, sense of presence because face to face we sort of take it naturally that we have that sense of connection because we are in the presence of each other. Yeah. But across the telecommunications line, you really don't know who is at the other end. Yeah. And so, especially when you are put in a virtual team, it may be in the same organization, you may have sort of seen these people, but now you have to work with them. So how do you work with a group of people you don't know? You have to establish that sense of connection, trust, and, uh, uh, and you know, feeling of a sense of community with a group of people. So uh, you mentioned that I did my uh, uh, Fulbright research in Morocco, and it was really interesting. So I'd like to share this experience. Uh, in Morocco, where the cultural context doesn't really encourage open communication between men and women, young men, men and women, uh, the internet became a medium uh, which helped them to connect. And uh, so this was really liberating for them because they were able to overcome some of the social traditions and mm. uh, of the cultural context through an electronic medium. And some people actually really like to create avatars or anonymous characters. And then when I asked them about <laughs> trust building, how do you know that the person is real? They said, uh, for example, they would say things like, you know, we keep on asking the same question. And if they give the wrong answer the second time, we know that this person is really not <laughs> real. <laughs> so they had figured out a wonderful way of getting a sense of the realness of the other. And yeah. it is only when they felt that connection that they would self-disclose. So <laughs> self-disclosure is also associated with uh, social presence. Oh, you know, uh, I have to play devil's advocate with you a little bit because you opened the door with the Sri Lanka story. And my wife and I have, have just finished watching this uh, Netflix show called Inventing Anna. And Anna is it's based on this true story where a woman portrays herself as an heiress from Germany. And she comes and, of course, borrows a lot of money. And, and so when you're watching this, she's just making up one story after another. And you're going, when is she going to get caught? And then, of course, we reflect on this and we've all known people a little bit like that. Right. And so um, so if we're teaching people social presence, aren't we also teaching some of the worst of us how to use that to convince others? Yes, in a way, you you perhaps are teaching people the worst of you too. <laughs> uh, how great that presence so people connect with you, right? And it can yeah. be a completely different personality. But uh, what is interesting is that, let's say just a moment like this, you can create your persona, so you create with the audience. However, if you're engaged in extended communication with this person, <laughs> You can figure it out. And that's what the Moroccan participants told me. Similar activity was going on in Sri Lanka too, in terms of how yeah. they established connection. And they were at that time using chat forums. You know, that was the predominant. It was in yeah. 2007 or four when I did this research. <laughs> and so chat was what they could use and Skype. And <laughs> it's really interesting. Once they established the connection through email and chat, I mean, mostly through chat, forums then they would actually give out their phone number so mm. the phone number giving out phone numbers happens only after the trust is established so that's how they generate that sense of presence and trust and if it, they feel it's real this is really a genuine person they are willing to give out their phone numbers so they well, also had associated that way you know <laughs> <laughs> they had also associated I was really uh, interested in this aspect. They had associated certain levels of presence and communication with different types of media. So mm -hmm. you would use, for example, an asynchronous forum for classwork, but you wouldn't use chat for that. Chat was predominantly a social communication tool. Mm -hmm. And then texting using uh, 
transliteration where they actually had certain numbers for Arabic characters because standard Arabic is difficult to write. Uh, in text mm. messages, they had certain icons that represented certain meaning. Mm. And so you really had to understand the cultural context in order to be able to communicate through those text messages. Sounds like my text messages with my uh, kid. <laughs> and I'm going, what language did you are you speaking? I don't I don't know what this is. Well, we need to move on to the takeaway because I know there's other stuff you're doing that we need to be able to talk about here. So how would you put together a takeaway? And I, I made an effort at this and I said, you know, we need to ensure that proximity bias. Guess what? I didn't update that. <laughs> we need to ensure <laughs> social present <laughs> does not affect you. I thought I got everything that fixed, but I didn't. So anyway, social presence, what, what's the takeaway on this, Lonnie? Yeah, social presence takeaway is to be effective. You, your team and your organization should, should generate a high level of social presence. That is a positive sense of social presence. Uh, there is also cultural aspects of how presence is generated. And in certain cultures, maybe high levels may not be that necessary, but it is important for us in organizations to develop this sense of social presence and connection and sense of community. Ah, there it is. Well said, all put together. But you know, we, we need to spend a couple minutes because we're doing so much stuff that I recognize that uh, you actually are quite involved in consulting. You have a book and there's a website. So can you tell us a little bit about all three of these things? Yes. So I have a consulting company called e-learning and intercultural communication consultants, LLC. And so we design, develop, research and evaluate online learning. So one of the big uh, projects we did was for Intel. We evaluated their distance learning systems when it initially went online. And uh, we had participants in that program from uh, the US, several locations in US, Israel, and I think the Philippines. And that was a wonderful project. I did, did it with two of my students. Mm -hmm. And so that was wonderful. Now we've also written about social presence. Yeah. Yeah. And so our recent 2019 book is Culturally Inclusive Instructional Design, mm -hmm. a framework and guide for building online wisdom communities. So we talk about how to build a community that progressively mm -hmm. becomes wise and social presence is a very important aspect of community mm -hmm. building. All right, we have, a, uh, we have some information on this book uh, on our website for the book, which is www.wiscom. And there it is. It's right there for people who are viewing. We've got the website. Right. Right yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Yeah. So the idea so is. What else, what else can we find on that website, Lonnie? Okay, so in that website, you will also find uh, some of the presentations we have done, links to presentations. And uh, we have chapter one of that book if and the table of contents. If people would like to go and uh, look at what the book involves, uh, a little bit about the authors. So uh, my uh, the two authors that I wrote this book with is Casey Freshett, who's now... Uh, associate professor and chair of the communication and journalism department mm. at Florida uh, at uh, Flor uh, uh, Florida State University. And then Ludmila Lane from Venezuela, who's mm. had lots of experience teaching there and who really looked at uh, how culture uh, looks at the concept of wisdom. And mm. wisdom is a concept, you know, in many uh cultural context uh, you don't have the concept of intelligence uh you have the concept of wisdom and like in the native communities which are close to me here in new mexico uh wisdom is uh, really a person's ability to contribute to community you you are not only uh somebody who has a lot of experience understanding but you also contribute to the community you work for the good of the community. 
Well, that's great. That's great. So maybe that's a topic for another show, but I need to, to tell folks that that kind of brings us to the end of this show. Our next episode will be next uh, Tuesday at 1 p.m. Central Time. And uh, in the meantime, I want to thank Lonnie for being our guest today. And uh, we'll see you next time. And so here's the end of the show. Thanks again, Lonnie. Good seeing you. Thank you. Thank you. You can find the Future of Work Live episodes in video and podcast format on www.marksalsbury.com. Additionally, YouTube hosts the video episodes on the Future of Work channel, and Apple, Spotify, and Google host the podcasts.